Hello. Good afternoon. Get this number, please. Okay. I'm sorry, did the court address me? No, not yet. Oh, we're good. So 14B District Court is now in session. This is Magistrate Hillary Braley presiding. Now calling case number 24C1060. This is Beal Properties LLC versus Tierra Mendoza and Aaron Teachout. Appearances for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Magistrate. Denise Baker, P53670 for the plaintiff. Good afternoon, Richard Baker, on behalf of Tierra Mendoza, uh, P76447, and I do believe my client is present via Zoom. Ms. Mendoza, please state your name for the record. So have the parties had a chance to discuss this yet? Yes, Your Honor. Opposing counsel and I did have a conversation uh, yesterday, and we have an offer which we've taken back to our client. Uh, we already have a judgment against Aaron Teachout, so the matter with uh, my uh, brother counsel is with uh, Tierra Mendoza only. There is a settlement offer that's been provided. We have not yet received a response. So maybe at this point we could just proceed with a request for discovery for 60 days um, and then go from there and hopefully we will resolve the matter. I would tend to agree with that, Your Honor. Uh, although I would ask for a bit of a longer of discovery, perhaps 90 days, uh, but I do anticipate that a settlement could possibly be reached. I have no objection to 90 days. Ninety days puts us at August twenty second. That will Does be that a cutoff, cutoff date. Yes. And the, yes, that'll be the date for the second pretrial as well. But discovery shall be permitted up until then, uh, and that works for everybody. Yes. Yes, that works for me. Thank you. Do you have the time of that second pretrial yet? Yes, that would be 2 p.m. All right. 2 p.m. on August 22nd. Thank you very much. Yes. And you said you have a judgment against Aaron Teachout already. Was there another case number for that one or no? No, same case. That judgment was entered just recently on May 16th. Okay. Okay. So then parties are just uh, requesting discovery, which will be permitted up until the second pretrial date, August 22nd, 2024 at 2 p.m. And you will receive a copy of this. Okay. One question that that August twenty second second pre trial at two p.m. will be via Zoom. Yes, that will be over Zoom before Judge Washington. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Anything else? Nothing further from the plaintiff. Nothing further from defense. Okay, thank you. Then, if the parties don't have anything else, I have one other matter before you. I do not. I'm free to go. Yes, you are free to go. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Okay, then Attorney Baker and Ms. Mendoza, you are free to go as well. And Attorney Baker, what was the other matter that you're on? Because I don't see your name. Lake Trust Credit Union versus Bailey Hodges. Ah, okay. Are you covering for the attorney of record? Uh, Mr. Sasson works with me. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Okay.
Um, give me just a moment, please. Sure. Uh, good afternoon, sir. What case are you here on? Uh, I am here for the debt dispute uh, for Bailey Hodges against Lake Cross Credit Union. And who are you? Uh, I am Bailey Hodges. Oh, okay. Uh, that's sorry, it's showing the wrong name. Um, my computer doesn't have a working video. I'm using my girlfriend's laptop. Okay. So, who's Ryan? Ryan Bilo Bilo. my girlfriend. Oh, okay. Okay, now calling case number 24C1062. This is Lake, Lake Trust Credit Union versus Bailey Hodges. Good afternoon, Madam Magistrate. Denise Baker, P53670 for the plaintiff. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Hodges, state your name for the record. Uh, Bailey Hodges. Okay, thank you. So today's the date and time set for a first hearing in this matter, I should say a first pre-trial. Have the parties had a chance to discuss this? 
I do not believe so. Uh, no, we have not. Okay, then at this time, if everyone is amenable, what I will do is send you an invitation to go into a breakout room. That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay, you should have that. Okay, Attorney Henry, give me a couple more minutes, please. Okay. Okay. Ah, you are connected to audio. Okay. Now calling case number 24C0848. This is American Express National Bank versus Caitlin Connor, also known as Caitlin F. Connor. Appearances for, oh, and Root Punch Juice LLC. Excuse me. Uh, appearances for the record, please. Uh, hi, good afternoon. John Witte, P66880 for the plaintiff. Saquara Henry, P65526, appearing on behalf of the defendant. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, today is the date and time set for a first pre-trial in this matter. Have the two of you had a chance to have a conversation yet? We haven't talked specifically on this, um, but I, I don't think we have an agreement yet, Your Honor. Uh, we work together quite a bit, and I'm assuming, Saquara, we need a little bit of time? Yes. So, Your Honor, if we could just maybe open discovery for 60 days. Yes. So, 60 days is putting us at July 25th. Does that, that work? Yes. Discovery. Discovery will be permitted until July 25th, 2024, which is the date set for the second pretrial. That will be at 2 in the afternoon over Zoom before Judge Washington. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And if you don't have anything else, then you are both free to sign out of Zoom. This hearing is concluded. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thanks Thank for. You. Thank you. Court will take a brief recess while we wait for the parties to come out of the breakout room.
Good afternoon. What matter are you here on? I'm appearing this afternoon on auto owners insurance versus Henderson Gross. Okay. Thank you. Give me just a minute. I was just taking a look at that. <clears throat> 14B District Court is back in session. This is Magistrate Hillary Grayley presiding. Now calling case number 15C3710. Auto Owners Insurance Company versus Jasonish Henderson Gross. So I will note that I wasn't paying attention to the time when I started calling this case. So it was scheduled for 2.15. Generally, I do give a 15-minute grace period. Uh, no worries. So, sorry about that. It is only 2.19, so if you're okay with waiting 10 minutes. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Then we will recall this in about 10 minutes. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Session now recalling case number two four C one zero six two Lake Trust Lake Trust Credit Union versus Bailey Hodges. Were the parties able to reach any sort of agreement in the breakout room? Yes, um, the 
defendant has agreed to enter into a conditional dismissal. Uh, the amount would be $4,930.72. Payments of $100 a month for six months beginning June 15th, and then $200 a month thereafter, which would begin December 15th. Um, I can send this to him via Adobe eSign. He's given me his email. I'll get it right over to him as soon as we get off them this hearing and then we'll get it submitted to the court for entry. Sure. Okay, uh, so you're saying that the amount for the conditional dismissal, $4,930.72, $100 a month starting June 5th, and then $200 a month starting December 15th. Did I get that correct? Okay. That is correct. Okay. And uh, Mr. Hodges, you are in agreement with that as it was stated? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Then the court will look for that to be submitted. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. This hearing is concluded. Parties are free to sign out of Zoom. Thank you.
Hey, you made it just under the wire there, Ms. Henderson Gross. I'm so sorry. Uh, now calling case number 15C3710. This is Auto Owners Insurance Company versus J. Shanish Henderson Gross. Appearances for the record, please. Yeah, good afternoon, Your Honor. May it please the court, Keith Cox of Winters and Associates on behalf of the plaintiff, P59146. Okay, ma'am, state your name for the record, please. J. Shanice Henderson Gross. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I appear to have your name spelled incorrectly on the uh, documentation here. So today is the date and time set for a hearing on a defendant's motion for installment payments. I do see that you are requesting an order for installment payments in the amount of $50 a month beginning June 1st. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And did the parties wish to discuss this in a breakout room? Well, I guess perhaps I can just maybe cut to the quick. Uh, we we filed a response requesting that amount be $150 based on the um, amount of the judgment balance, which is in excess of $9,000. Uh, just while we asked for $150 and the defendant's at $50, I, I would propose $100. Um, if she can do that, I can stipulate to that. I don't think Only I can. Do, I don't have a job right now. When I get a job, I will be able to pay you guys more money, of course, but I just don't have it right now. Yeah, that's that's the lowest I can uh, stipulate, Your Honor, uh, to the extent the court she's looking for relief below the hundred dollars monthly. I'm only authorized to go as low as a hundred uh, based on the size of the balance. So um, I guess we can't work it out. We'll have to lean into the court to enter an order. Uh, whatever the court thinks is reasonable based on what she's represented and what the balance is. Thank you. Give me just a moment, please. Ms. Henderson Gross, you're actively looking for work? Yes. And okay. also the cash assistance so I can get more, you know, um, some type of monthly income. Because I don't get that right now. I'm working towards it. Um, I should have an answer within the next 10 days about cash assistance and I'll be able to do the hundred dollars if the cash assistance get a you know within the ten days if she tell me that I'm approved.
So at this time, the court is going to grant the defendant's motion for payments of $50 a month to begin on June 1st. I will note that if if, uh, if you fail to make those payments, then the plaintiff may file an affidavit motion to set the order aside. Do you understand, Ms. Henderson-Gross? Yes. Okay. Uh, Ms. Henderson-Gross, if your intent, is your driver's license been suspended? Yes. What your next step, and I'm obviously not your attorney, but uh, I believe you need to take a copy of that executed order uh, by uh, uh, by the court and then take it to the Michigan Secretary of State. Would I get a copy of that through a mail? The order? Uh, I, don't, I don't know how the court will make it available. This is the this is the felony court. So I, I believe generally it's mailed out, but you can call the 14B District Court to talk about I suspect it'd be mailed out, ma'am. <coughs> okay. I'll call the 14B in in Okay. Then if the parties don't have anything else at this time. This hearing is concluded, and you are free to sign off Zoom. Very good. Thank you, Anna. Have a good day. Okay. Ma'am, um, Judge, can I ask one more question? Uh, magistrate, but yes, you may. Um, is my license suspended through him? I mean, not like through the people I have to pay or the Secretary of State. Was that is that what he was just explaining? So, okay, so a couple things. One, the court can't give you legal advice either, okay? okay. Um, okay. And also, I do not have a copy of your uh, Secretary of State history or anything in front of me right now. So the advice, I believe, was to reach out to the Secretary of State. You should do that, and they should be able to tell you. Okay, and one last thing. What do I make the payments to? Where do I? That's a great question. I can answer that one, Your Honor. Um, you want you want to make check or money order payable to um, the named plaintiff in the case, uh, so that's Auto Owners Insurance, and you want to mail it uh, to plaintiff's attorney's office. That's Attorney Susan Winter's office. Uh, that address should be on any of the paperwork that you have for the case. Do you see the three thousand pound center? Is it is it possible for you to mail me something with this information on there so I can have something? It should be on your court paperwork. Do you have your court paperwork? I do. It's it's not on there. Um, Ms. Henderson Gross, are you okay with uh maybe providing me with an email address you wouldn't mind receiving an email at? Give me just a second. 